密切盖教堂。China's first church was completed the following year. Magistrate Wang sent two name boards as gifts reading: the Temple of the Immortals Flower and the Pure Land of the West. Wang Ban selected the names himself. Temple of the Immortals Flower, Pure Land of the West. A Buddhist monk preaching Christ builds a temple called Pure Land of the West. Father Ricci, you find this humorous? No, but interesting. How many people do you imagine thought we were Indian monks preaching Buddhism? <laughs> Did you have any trouble in Jiaoqing? Not really. Many people were not pleased that we hadn't consulted the Chinese fortune almanac before building the church. Some felt the church's position would be geomantically wrong for a pagoda beside it. We moved the church, and there was no problem. Learning our customs wasn't easy. You couldn't even neglect the almanac and geomancy. Father Ricci and Father Ruggieri were in Jiaoqing from 1583 to 1589. During these six years, they continued to dress as Buddhist monks. They made their first relationships in Chinese society. All of this was important to their later teaching and missionary work in Nanking and Peking. Particularly important was the printing of a map and the Ten Commandments. No one would find anything unusual about this map today, but the Chinese of 400 years ago believed that China was the center of the earth, surrounded on all sides by barbarians. Names were arbitrarily ascribed to a few small islands in the sea. Matteo Ricci hung a world map in his temple of the Immortals Flower. That map was the product of Columbus's discovery of the New World, as well as Magellan's and Vasco da Gama's opening of new sailing routes. This map caused much surprise among the scholars who came to see the foreign monks and the foreign temple. Italy is my home. From there, I went by ship to Lisbon in Portugal. Afterwards, I went around the African continent, across the Indian Sea, until I landed at Goa. Father Ricci, there were no planes or steamers then. How long did such a trip take you? We sailed for more than six months. If there was wind, we traveled. If there was no wind, we didn't. It was very hot on the tropical seas. Many became ill. Some died. I was able to confirm my maps on the voyage, and at night confirm my astronomy texts. It was an added benefit. I could tell everyone that I had been to these places. Sailing halfway around the world was difficult, but this kind of practical experience was invaluable. Matteo Ricci arranged for the map to be printed complete with Chinese annotations. He presented visitors to the temple with a copy. He especially sent one to Wang Ban, who also gave them to friends. Eventually, one map made its way to Nanking, where the scholars now became aware that an educated Western monk was in China. At the same time, 
Father Ruggieri translated and printed copies of the Ten Commandments, which he gave to visitors of the temple. There was nothing incompatible about the Ten Commandments and Chinese traditional morality. Moreover, Chinese of that period took seriously whatever appeared in print. So, for these reasons, the two foreign monks gained wider acceptance. However, the Chinese of the northern Song Dynasty must also be given credit, for without their invention of movable type, Matteo Ricci would never have so quickly convinced the Chinese that they were cultured men rather than nearly illiterate barbarians. Father Ricci, what do you remember most about your six years in Jiaoqing? Well, I made a clock which I sent to Magistrate Wang Ban, and in our spare time, Father Ruggieri and I compiled a dictionary. How could you make a clock? And how did you compile a dictionary? When I was in Rome, I knew an excellent teacher, Clavius, a scientist comparable to Galileo. He taught me astronomy, mathematics, and mechanics. At the time, I found it all interesting. In China, it all proved useful. That I would be teaching these things to my Chinese friends was totally unexpected. Wasn't that destiny too? Yes, it was the will of God. How did you compile the dictionary? We called it a vocabulary of ordinary terms. Father Ruggieri and I used Portuguese. Romanized Chinese, Chinese characters, and Italian to write it. Our purpose was to make it easier for those who came to China to learn Chinese. The book underwent constant revision. Twenty years later, I used Latin letters to record 387 separate characters. Sometime after that, Father Cataneo used a punctuation system. To express the five tones. I must really congratulate you. I had no idea that the first Chinese Western language dictionary was compiled by you nearly 400 years ago. No need for praise. We needed a dictionary to study the language. Also, it was my destiny to live in China for 28 years. The third period of Matteo Ricci's stay in China was in Nanchang and Nanking. It was after adjusting to China that Matteo Ricci began to investigate more deeply Chinese culture and to teach Western science. There were many obstacles put in his way between Jiaoqing and Nanking. The first was that Father Ruggieri was ordered back to Rome, leaving Father Ricci alone in Jiaoqing. The next year, the Governor General fancied the temple of the Immortals Flower and forced Matteo Ricci out. Depressed as anyone would be, Father Ricci went to Saozhou, where he built another church. One evening, a group of drunkards forced their way into the church and beat him, wounding his arm with an axe. These were Matteo Ricci's most difficult times in China. But at the same time, he was consistently moving from Jiaoqing to Saozhou to Nanchang to Nanking. More and more towards the cultural and political centers of China. After being wounded, he followed a friend's advice and changed his appearance. Hold on, this might hurt. It's all right.
listen for. Father Ricci, I know that you are dressing like a Buddhist monk because of our culture. Is that wrong? What the Chinese respect most is a scholar. The social position of a monk is far below that. That gang of fools would never bother a scholar, but they would a monk. Then I should wear a scholar's garb? You are so learned that I have wanted to suggest this for some time. Thank you, Chu Tai Su. Chu Tai Su, a friend of Father Ricci's in Saozhou, suggested that he wear a scholar's clothes. This was a key decision, for it would encourage Chinese scholars to have deeper contacts with Father Ricci. It was also because of Chu Tai Su that he began to teach Western science. Father Ricci, can you talk about your relationship with Chu Tai Su as teacher and student? I can't presume to be his teacher, but our relationship was destined. I had not yet changed my appearance then. One day he brought gifts, said he wanted me to teach him, knelt and bowed three times. I was... I was... At a loss? Yes, at a loss. We are not so ceremonious to our teachers in the West. He said he wanted to learn mathematics. The mathematics that we study today? Yes. I translated from some basic mathematics texts that were in Latin and explained it to him as we went along. He was very industrious. He remembered all that I told him and wrote it out again. In one year, we had gone through the first volume of Euclid's Elements. I taught him for two years until I went to Nanchang. You weren't in Nanchang very long. What did you get most out of your stay there? Friends. What kind of friends? Like Zhang Benqing, the head of the Bailu Academy, Jin An Wang, Dr. Wang, and other scholars. Whenever I had problems studying Chinese materials, they explained things for me. They also helped me revise the books I wrote in Chinese. The four classics, the Book of History, the Uriah Dictionary, the Book of Changes, the Book of Rites, the Book of Songs. You actually studied all of these ancient texts? My friends helped me a great deal. Otherwise, I would never have been able to translate the four classics into Latin in four years. That's impressive. What was your reason for studying the classics? I was looking for similarities between Chinese thought and the Catholic faith. The Golden Mean, the Arya, the Book of Songs, all teach that men serve the High God. That God is our Lord. You are certainly a man of strong vision to go through the ancient texts looking for Christian principles. It wasn't just for that alone. I found Chinese culture and thought very attractive. You talked a moment ago of writing Chinese books. Your first was... Treatise on Friendship. I wrote it to thank Jen An Wang for his friendship. I gave it to him. Oh, what was in it? It was a collection of 100 proverbial sayings on friendship taken from Western philosophers and translated into Chinese. If interests are compatible, the friendship will be eternal. Chinese consider friendship very important. If not for my Chinese friends, my life would have been very dull and lonely. I couldn't have translated the four books, and I wouldn't have written any books in Chinese. The Treatise on Friendship was the first book that Father Ricci wrote in Chinese. He also wrote The True Account of God as a Catechism. By this time, Matteo Ricci had...